Back in 2020, I made a tier list for the missions in GTA 5, but I never ended up releasing the footage of me ranking them all because I didn't think it was very good. But now three years later, I want to have another crack at it, ranking the missions based on my own personal ideas as to what makes a good mission. And you'll be able to like compare with me and see if you agree on my assessment on the missions. This is just all the main missions. It doesn't include all the setups, but it does include the ones that are important for the GTA 5 speed runs. Those are like iconic for us, so I wanted to rank them somewhere. The criteria that I'm going to be judging these for is like all over the place. Just whatever comes to mind, whatever I feel, you know. Prologue, I think, is an S tier mission. Because like it sets up mystery, you, you wonder what's going on, who these characters are. It has snow, which is something that doesn't feature much in the game. There's a cool shootout. People are still debating exactly what happened in Prologue to this day. Created some memes. It's all good in my books. Franklin and Lamar, I think, is a good introduction to some really cool characters. You know, Simeon, Franklin, Lamar. I think it's a great initial mission for them as well. I don't know if it's S bit because like not a lot happens in it like it is just after all a drive through the city kind of thing but i think as an introduction to the characters it's pretty good that i could not have said better myself repossession i mean the cutscene with simeon and franklin is just so funny i never had a black son but if i did i want him to be just like you you know it's it's pretty difficult even in the speed run it is still somewhat difficult and you can fail it's challenging but not too challenging. You drive multiple different vehicles. Has to be an A in my book, I think. Pulling favors. While I understand it is important to introduce the concept of side missions, making pulling favors like the only side mission you have to complete to complete the entire game. And while I do think Tanya is an underrated character and some of the banter on this mission is pretty decent, I'm still going to put it in D. I would put it in hot garbage, but I recognize why it had to exist. Just be like, hey, side missions, they're a thing. You can do them. Chop. Chop is cute. A cool character who is hilariously underutilized in this game. He does basically nothing. He doesn't really matter. The drive in the van is really annoying. In the speed run especially. I mean, it's got some weird bits of speed tech and stuff, but I do not like this mission. Nothing ultimately comes of it, really. It kind of sets up D as an antagonist for a bit until he gets shot in the head. It's just like a very mid mission. I don't think it's bad necessarily, but it's not very good. It's somewhere in the middle here. And I'm a little bit biased against it because of how much, like I hate it in the speed run. Complications, not a lot happens in this mission, like gameplay wise. The stealth is laughably stupid. The drive is just you drive there and you drive back. You have to drive the butter car, which is like, an annoying car to drive. But there are some funny things in the mission, like if you fail in Michael's house, the tennis pro puts a mandate in front of him and he yells, Help! 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 He's, he's black! Oh. Which is so out of left field that it made me laugh the first time I saw it. The fight between Michael and Simeon, I consider that to be kind of iconic. Like it's got some memorable things in it. I, I don't hate the mission. There's nothing offensive about it. It's just gameplay wise, not very good. So it's, it's like a C or B kind of territory. I'm gonna put it in B. Because it involves Simeon. I like Simeon. Father Son, an annoying mission in the speed run. Like the whole premise of it, Franklin climbing on a boat and then jumping off the boat saving Jimmy is just such a dumb premise. And it's so ridiculously scripted and, and all timed and stuff. Like you can shoot a guy on the boat and he doesn't fall off until like 30 seconds later because he's meant to be scripted to die at that point. There's a guy on the boat who's literally invulnerable because Rockstar wanted to remove a, a bug. It's just such a badly designed mission. I'm sure when you play it for the first time, you're like, oh boy, we're chasing a boat on the freeway, haha. -ha. But upon reflection, it's not a good mission. It's way too scripted. It does introduce the mechanics, but like, who cares? Everyone knows what mechanics are because they exist in real life and they exist in other GTA games. I don't want to put it in D. I don't hate the mission, but it's not good. I mean, no, I I'm going to put it in D. If I hate the mission, it'll be hot garbage. I'm putting it in D. I'm, I'm not ranking them within these tiers, by the way. Like, Father Son is probably better than pulling favors, but yeah, it's, it's not a good mission. No. It's, it's in this kind of area here. Marriage counseling. It's such a short and sweet mission. The gameplay isn't really significant, but I can't help but like this mission because of that joke that I made in Pacifist about Martin Madrazo stealing driver's licenses. Martin Madrazo, the notorious driver's license thief, manages to get his hands on Franklin's driver's license. License. No, Franklin. Absolute fucking witchcraft. And we are introduced to Martin and the scene is pretty funny. It does set up, you know, the next stage of the game because Michael now needs money. The characters are sort of funny. The interactions are kind of funny. I'm going to stick up my hand and say that was uncool, bud. Yeah. My bad. Seriously. Oh. How fucking magnanimous. 
May I please offer you my applause? You fucking motherfucker! Dude. It's got some funny memes in it, but the gameplay sucks. And it's even designed poorly, because the way that you're pulling the rope to pull down the house doesn't make any sense in regards to physics. I don't want to put it in C. I might put it like a B minus. It's possible for like the cutscenes and stuff to make up a bad gameplay, but I, I, I think B. Friend request, again, gameplay, not very good. Like you, you drive, get dressed, you walk and then drive home. There's nothing that really happens in it. You're not, you, you don't get to drive any cool cars. Like you get to see Lester for the first time and those interactions are pretty funny. His interactions with all the hipster coder people is pretty funny and you blow up Mark Zuckerberg's head. That's funny, like, who doesn't remember that? Like, you ask people who played GTA 5 10 years ago, you say, hey, remember when you blew up Mark Zuckerberg's head? They're like, oh yeah, that was, that was good times. The gameplay, so bad. But the cutscenes and the interactions and the characters, good. Can a mission with bad gameplay be an A? No, I, I don't think it can. I think it's B. It will put it in B. Daddy's little girl, the banter between Jimmy and Michael, uh, like Michael breaking the TV and stuff, very memorable stuff. Jimmy, while being a loser, is kind of funny. You get to ride a bike in this mission, which is something you don't get much a chance to do. It's at least a, a different change on the formula that you're in a bike race. But then again, like the game just allows you to cheat and Jimmy has effectively no chance of winning anyway. Although I suppose casually, you probably wouldn't realize that. So maybe you would actually just do the bike race casually. It contains one of my favorite cutscene parts where Michael walks up and grabs the speakers and just like chucks it in the water. I think that's pretty funny. The game does allow you to have, which is quite uncommon, multiple ways of completing the mission in that, yeah, you can cheat on the bike race and you can just kill the guys rather than going into the tunnels. When you're on the jet skis. So I think this is a pretty good mission, honestly. Good cutscenes, funny dialogue, funny characters, varied gameplay. Well, not amazing gameplay. Still pretty good. I think it's an A mission. Like, it's kind of what you're looking for. Case in the jewel store. It's one of those sort of filler necessary missions to set up something that you're doing later. Like you understand why they exist, but it's not very good. I mean, it does have those references like Moses, uh, ironically, he found Jesus. Uh, all those Irish crazies, they mostly just disappeared. That crew from the south, they all went down. There was a. Uh... An Eastern European guy making moves in Liberty City, but nah, he went quiet. But ultimately, you're driving to a store, going on a roof, taking a picture, and then going back to Lester's. It's boring gameplay-wise. It's not that great. I don't think it's bad because it needs to exist, but it's either D or C. It references GTA 4 and Nico, so I'm going to put it in C. Just for that. Carbine rifles, hot garbage. Get this shit out of my face. So carbine rifles is one of the only setups that are on this list, but it's so iconic in the speed run because it's destroyed so many speed runs where you get a helicopter spawning above you and you get the cops on you like permanently. I have seen casuals do carbine rifles and get stuck on it for like 15 minutes because they'll get like three stars and have never had to deal with three stars before, have, nowhere to, have no idea where to go and just keep getting bodied by them. Like if you know how to do us, even then you can still get unlucky and it can screw your entire speed run. I just hate this mission. Screw this mission. How many sub one trap percents I had back in the day that were screwed by this goddamn mission. And it spawns by a text message. So you can get text messages that, that, that delay it. Again, not an issue casually, but in the speed run. Oh my God, die. So the smart jewel store heist and the loud jewel store heist are gonna get basically the same rating and it's not gonna be very high. I don't think it's bad that you have your first heist of the game not be like 100 out of 100 firing on all cylinders. Because if you did that, like you couldn't top that for the rest of the game. So I understand why the first heist needed to be like exciting, but not that great. But at the same time, these heists are pretty boring. You don't get much out of them because most of the money goes to Martin. It is just baby's first heist. You know, you, you drive there, break open some cases, and then you drive away. And it's ridiculously scripted. Unless, of course, you know the speedrun strategies where it gives you a little bit more freedom in terms of at least one part of it when you're on the bike where to go. But even then, that's not that much freedom. It's just a really, really scripted heist. I think it's bad, but we're gonna put it in C, I think. Because I'm sure when people played it for the first time, it was fairly exciting, right? But I just, the lack of freedom and the lack of a shootout and stuff, you know. Long stretch, a mission that can be done at so many different points in the game. I don't hate this mission. The band between the characters is pretty good. D just randomly getting shot in the face. Like, what the hell? It involves multiple different kinds of gameplay, kind of. You're in close quarters shooting your way through, which will probably be very difficult casually. Is it the first really big shootout that you can have in the game? And then you have to escape the cops and stuff, which is frustrating because of how the cops work in GTA 5. But it's still, I think, a fairly well-designed mission. I don't love it, though. I'm going to put it in B. Like a, like a high B. It could, it could even be in A? I mean, what more do you want out of a mission in GTA 5? It does introduce the ammunition and you have to buy a flashlight, which is effectively meaningless. You need to buy a flashlight, man. We're not gonna get out of here alive without it. Which is weird. I might put an A. As far as GTA missions goes, it's, it's pretty good.
Mr. Phillips, as an introduction to Trevor and him breaking the face of Johnny from The Lost and the Damned, I'm going to put an S. Perfect. It introduces Trevor so well. There's a lot of iconic lines in it and stuff. Who the fuck are you speaking to? Who? Who? I'm talking to you, huh? Now Johnny ain't going to be cool if you mess him with her again. Oh, really? Well, you don't think so, huh? Well, why don't we just ask him then, huh? Hey, hey, cowboy, you mind that I fucked your old lady? Sorry, what was that? Well, no, 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 you don't mind? Oh, because you're a dead man? And the only sentient part of you left is this little bit of brain and the gristle on the end of my boot? Well, thank you very much, cowboy. Bullshit! Him just stomping Johnny to death, a character that I did not like in The Lost and the Damned. I hated that DLC for GTA 4. I, I love this. Like, everyone who played GTA 5 for the first time was like, holy shit, this guy Trevor, this is insane. Uh, it, it, it just introduced him in such a perfect way that you knew exactly who Trevor was instantly. And as I say, the gameplay is pretty decent. I mean, the driver's pretty scripted and long, but you do get a cool shootout with the bikers. And I have, I still remember to this day watching Summit 1G trying to do this shootout, not realizing how to use Trevor's special ability and just dying over and over and over again. <laughs> Trevor Phillip Industries. While you do get introduced to Mr. Chang and his translator, who I consider to be fairly funny characters, and the interactions where he's like, I'm rushing, and all that stuff, is pretty funny. I don't think this is a very good mission. I don't think when people think of GTA 5 and its cutscenes that they remember these cutscenes specifically. And the shootout is very formulaic. You're stuck in cover, popping out, shooting. I mean, it's still a decent shootout, I suppose. And the cutscenes are decent. I don't think this is a bad mission, but I'm probably gonna put in B, I think. It's nothing special, but I'm, I'm not gonna say it's bad. Nervous Ron. Now, this is interesting, because it's such a slow mission, and it's so annoying in the speed run. But I mean, I don't think it's a bad mission. I do have a soft spot for missions that require you to do different things and introduce new mechanics. And while it does restrict you to that goddamn water tower, it does give you a sniping stealth kind of thing. And then you get a big shootout and then you get to ride on a plane and shoot people and stuff. And then you get to fly back, which is the first flying in the game. When you know the mission intimately, you know how on the rails it is and how little freedom you really have to do different things. When you know everything about it, it's so easy. But playing it the first time, Probably, probably a good mission. I think it's probably an A mission. And even now, having run it a million times, I still think it's a good mission, so. Crystal Maze. This is a hard one to judge because in the speed run, it's kind of stupid because you just turn on Trevor's power, run to the bottom, pick up the thing, explode yourself, despawn all the enemies, and then walk out. And the mission is so linear, you're only having additional options of how to do things using speedrun stress, like dropping a grenade and running out and stuff. But I mean, casually, this would probably be a pretty decent mission. You get that cool scene of the huge explosion at the end. And the, of course, the, the card scene at the beginning where Trevor is like smashing Tao Cheng's head against the thing there and talking about how he's always wanting to be a, a big time drug dealer and gun runner. I'm afraid we want to go down a different path. What? We want to explore other opportunities. This Shut the fuck up! I mean, since I was a little kid, I, I dreamt big. You know, I've always wanted to be an international drug dealer and a weapons trader. All right, so I'm begging you. Let's make this happen. I'm very sorry. You're sorry? You're fucking sorry? I just spilled my fucking guts out to you, and you say to me you're sorry. I mean, that's a pretty memorable thing in the game. Is this a bad mission? Like, not a lot happens on it, but I mean, as I say, it's just judging it from a speedrunner's perspective versus a casual perspective, I think it's a fine mission. B, I think. S, really? I, nah, uh, maybe A. I don't think it goes into S territory. But you're right, I mean, that, that scene of blowing up the barn is really memorable. Friends reunited, terrible. I mean, again, the opening cutscene with Wade, how you're like, like, Trevor punches him in the face and stuff, and uh, him discovering that that Michael's alive. I get kind of a Michael Gesanka. And the whole conversation about how Trevor and Michael would run together and stuff. You get a lot of information about the characters here. And the interaction between the characters is funny. But the actual mission, the stealth is so bad. If you manage to do a stealth, it's really boring. If you don't do a stealth, it's really boring. And just a really long drive, which clearly exists for the purposes of giving you exposition, information about the characters and stuff. But the gameplay is terrible. Like I can understand why it exists as it does, 
to give that information, and I can recognize the characters are funny, but the gameplay sucks. So I'm gonna put it in C or B. I think C. The drive is just so long and boring. I mean, that whole thing about dropping the nuke and stuff. Will you tell me the story about that boy, Trisha? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where were we? Right, 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 right. So this kid, he could fly planes. So he signed up for the Air Force to fly all day long and bomb villages and maybe, just maybe, drop the nuke. It can't say it's a bad mission. It's not one that I think on and go, damn this mission, but it's not great either. Fame or shame? This is another one where the gameplay is not good, but the cutscenes are funny. You know, you're a real asshole. What did you just fucking say to me? Stop it! You two, you're ruining my fucking yoga! Somebody say yoga? <gasps> Trevor? Michael. I've been in witness protection. I still am. That's great. That's great. I want you to dance sexy, celebrity. Mm -hmm. I mean, I need music or... Are you trying to fucking annoy me, huh? I'll dance. Good. <laughs> These are the memorable things from GTA 5 that you remember even years later. But like the, the, the gameplay though, it's, it's a drive and then like a super slow on the rails drive where you have no deviation in where you can chase Laszlo, everything rubber banding and stuff. It, like the gameplay is just boring. I'm still gonna put it in a B though. When I think of GTA 5, I think of a lot of the cutscenes that came from Fame or Shame. Dead Man Walking. Davey, how you doing? How do you not give this an S just because it has blimp strap? But even beyond that, the banter between Dave and Michael, Dave hitting Michael in the head, knocking him unconscious, you sneaking through that facility, is it actually a little bit difficult when you play casually, if you can recall, and jumping out the window and then getting away from the cops and, and, and the conversation between Franklin and Michael, of course, is also pretty important. We did a deal a long time ago. Didn't go quite the way it was supposed to go. Wrong guy got killed. So I had to go into kind of a, an informal witness protection program. He helped me. I didn't reveal secrets of his, and everything was cool. I mean, he shows up, starts calling in favors, telling me to do shit. I mean, look, Franklin, I'm working for the fucking feds. I've done a lot of things that I ain't proud of. All right, man, look, man, you help me. The way I see it, man, the least I can do is help you. It's a death sentence, Franklin. Man, I, I, I ain't trying to hear all that shit, man. If the Bureau ain't gonna take you to court, them motherfuckers just hustlers anyway. And I ain't finna let no motherfucking cat think he's so motherfucking crazy, run me up a tree. Fuck that. This is also, I think, a pretty memorable mission, and it does change up the gameplay a bit. And it's iconic because of the memes. So I'm, I'm putting an S. Maybe it'd be an A, if not for the things external to the mission, like Blimstrat and all that jazz. Did somebody say yoga? Hot garbage. Well, is it hot garbage? There's this thing you've got to realize that sometimes you need slower things in games to make you fully appreciate the more action-packed moments. And this does set up various different things. It, it makes it so his, his family leaves him and stuff. It's important in the story. He does get drugged by Jimmy, which is kind of funny. There's the aliens and stuff. The cutscenes are cool. It's just the gameplay is really bad and annoying. <laughs> like, is there nothing else they could have done? Like golf or something? I'm gonna put it in D. It is a change of pace gameplay wise. The interactions with the characters are funny. Yeah, I don't think it's hot garbage. It's just not good. Three's Company, I think it's almost impossible to fail this mission. But the cutscenes, you know, Trevor meeting Franklin for the first time, them flying in, Mr. K get, potentially getting a huge flashlight shoved up his ass, or whatever, us seeing Michelle, Karen, whatever the hell her name is from GTA 4 again. You do get multiple different forms of gameplay. I mean, you get to fly a helicopter for the first time, specifically, I think. You get to snipe, you get to hang from a building and shoot, and you get to smash a window and stuff. This is a pretty good mission. It's just really on the rails, really scripted. But the cutscenes are good, the gameplay is varied. Yeah, I'm gonna put this in A. Like, what more do you want from mission, really? Can't say it's an S mission, but yeah, I think it's pretty good. What I look for in missions is any hints of those rare times where Rockstar gives you multiple ways to complete something that people will naturally discover on their own. Since that is so uncommon in GTA 5 missions, if that exists, I'm like, here's 700 points. Just take all the points, you know? Sky in the port, this is hot garbage. I can understand why they needed to go to the port to get information. The cutscenes are like, if you have a crude sense of humor, kind of funny in, you know, Wade being covered in shit, the whole banter about their cocks or whatever. I ain't got a very big penis. Some girls laugh when they, when they look at it. Oh, show me. Oh, no. Show me, okay. boy! I, 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 I don't want to. Mine ain't nothing special. 
but this boy gets the job done. If you like that kind of stuff, I understand why you might like those cutscenes. I'm not a huge fan. But even then, the things they had you do at the port are so colossally boring that I can only think they did that. So, like, the actual heist itself is elevated. You know how bored you were on Sky in the Port? Isn't this what you're doing right now super fun? Even while I can't understand why this exists, it's still ridiculously bad, and I do not like it. Hood Safari? Yeah, I mean, who doesn't remember the whole... Courier service. Packets to collect. <laughs> My throat getting numb already. So we good, nigga, right? Well, let's go. How about a taste? No, man, we leaving. I want a taste of the other side of the brick. Now, you heard what your boy said, you're leaving. Hey, give me, give me the, give me the back. Whoa. What the fuck? Did we ask for a key or a fucking ounce? Man, that's motherfucking drywall. Hey, we got some motherfucking buyer's remorse out here. You can't fucking hustle a hustler! It's also, of course, got at the very beginning the... Here, darling. Why don't you go get yourself something nice, okay? Oh, thank you! <laughs> it, it this is, is seven dollars. I said something nice, not expensive. You want to be a greedy fucking cow, huh? No. Now get the fuck out of here, all right? You and men are all, all the same. The same. Everyone knows those memes. And the gameplay, like shooting as you're going through the street, hopping on jet skis, escaping from the cops, that there's two different endings. Well, actually technically three. One where you escape just by yourself, one you escape with Trevor, one you escape with uh, Lamar. And you could also end with Trevor as well. Like this, there's multiple different ways to end the mission, even if they're all basically using the same sort of gameplay. And there's different bands depending on which ending you do. I think this is pretty like an S mission. I think the memes elevate it. When people think back to the game, they think of these cutscenes. And as I say, because there's multiple ways to end the mission, I'm like, yes, Rockstar, do more of this, please. Mini sub is only on here because it is just so bad. It is terrible. Like, I can understand if you want a mini sub to exist in your heist, you have to get it somehow. But did, did you have to get it by, like, driving it really, really slowly through the water in a way that you can't possibly fail? S for mini sub? Get out of here. Garbage. I do, to some degree, think they added this just to force you to have to appreciate the underwater scenery. In that respect, maybe it's not that bad. Like, when you only have to do it once and you get to go underwater for the first time, you're like, wow. Wow, look at this underwater stuff. Ain't that cool? Look at all this sea life and what whatnot. I think that was probably the point. Maybe I'll put it in D then. Because it is your first experience underwater in a submarine. And it introduces the concept that you can go underwater with some vehicles. By the book, it's hard to forget that initial scene where Trevor is shitting himself. The hell are you doing? Oh, nothing. Are you taking a dump? Why do you care, huh? The fuck is wrong with you? It's the first time you're introduced to Devon Weston. This mission was so controversial that it was censored in Japan. Oh, no, no, please. I tell what? you what you Listen want to him know. up. No, please. Uh, Mr. K, you got a preference? Hey, 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 hey. When people reference all those terrible things in those Grand Theft Auto V games or whatever, they reference by the book and the torture Ooh. scenes. Mr. K is kind of funny. While the gameplay isn't difficult necessarily, it is pretty unique as far as the whole game is concerned. Like you're kind of doing like a guess who kind of thing. It's just, it's very scripted. It's very hard to fail. And you do get important dialogue between Dave and Michael talking about- What does he know? He knows I'm alive. He knows I got money. And now he knows I'm working with the FIB. Does he know how long you've been working with the FIB? How long? The fuck does that matter? Either you were working with us before the cash depot job, you walked your crew into an ambush, one of them spent 10 years on the run, and the other landed in a federal penitentiary. Or? Or, we stumbled on the cash depot job, Brad went down, you went down, Trevor got away, the FIB cut you a deal on your sickbed, faked your death, and you end up here. Has he said anything about Brad? Fuck yeah, he has. Plenty. I keep changing the subject. You know, he thinks you might actually commute Brad's sentence when this is all over. That's good. Fine work. We'll send another letter. It's about time anyway. Oh, so that's you who's been sending those fucking letters to Trevor, huh? Yeah. He thinks they're from Brad. It's an important mission as far as the game is concerned, as far as the story is concerned. The gameplay is interesting and varied and memorable. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put an S, honestly. I don't know what I'd change about it. I'm also a huge fan of torture, so 
Hotel Assassination. Every single game has assassinations, and I hate this one. Depending on when you do it, Franklin already has a bunch of money. The only reason this assassination's in here and the other ones aren't is because this one you have to do to complete the game, and clearly they made it that way so to introduce you to the concept of doing assassinations, but there's not many in the game anyway. You get like $7,000 for killing a dude, whoop de doo and you end up having to sit around there for like two minutes or something before the guy finally comes out and you shoot him. It's just a lot of waiting for what is ultimately a fair, fairly boring shooting one guy and leaving. I'm not gonna say it's hot garbage, but it's close. True, it does impact the world as well. Like you, after you do Hotel Assassination, you do get Franklin's new house. I'm, I'm gonna say it's in D. Like I understand why it's here, but I don't think the gameplay is particularly interesting. It wants to pretend that you have multiple ways to solve the problem, but in reality, 90% of the places you could go to set yourself up to shoot the dude, it just fails you. It's like a mission trying to pretend to be a hitman mission, but the only thing you can really do is stand from a distance and shoot the dude with a weapon. The Freighter Merryweather heist? I think this is a fine heist. I'm trying to think of anything mem really memorable, anything stand out about this mission. I mean, it's a lot more sniping. You're sneaking on a boat, but the stealth is so lame. It's just shooting a bunch of people in the face with a silenced pistol. It's just so scripted. It's just a really average mission. Like if this mission had been earlier in the game, I would have given it some more points, but everything that we're experiencing in this freighter mission, we've experienced somewhere else. It's nothing new. And that the mini sub in this ends up being like just the, the tiniest amount of gameplay. So we go through that mini sub just for like a, a couple of seconds at the end is silly. The ending cutscene is pretty funny. Hey, is that a master? What? I mean, what the fuck you doing here? You should be in bed. Yes. I should be. I would be if certain known associates weren't busy making themselves the enemies of the state. You know, the... Hold on, man. A super weapon? The Chinese? What? What you think is in there? I thought he talked to you. Idiot. We'll all be dead within a week. Think. Great. But that you get no reward for it, like it's just so pointless. You get no money. Everything returns to the status quo afterwards. It is the least impactful heist in the entire game to the degree that it could have been removed entirely and nothing would change about the game. I'm gonna put it in C. It's not an offensive mission. It's not a thing that comes to mind when I think, what are the bad missions in GTA 5? But in reality, it's not that good. The offshore Mayweather heist, at least the mini sub is more impactful. And because you go below the surface far more. You get to see a lot more of the sea life, all the sharks and stuff. But the idea of you having an app, a Trackify app that can detect a seismic radioactive thing under the water is completely absurd. The amazingly long drive from one side of the map to the other, the banter is not worth that. It's not even memorable or funny. I can remember no lines from that drive. The flight back is more frustrating than it is difficult when you're in the cargo bob and stuff. Trevor's anger at the end hitting his head is somewhat memorable and stuff, but like, this is just again, a pretty average mission. Blitz play, while I didn't put the setups in here, like the setups obviously are not particularly interesting, but that they lead to this heist, which is pretty good. Blitz play is that memorable heist that everyone remembers doing. It's a complicated shootout, many different things coming from different angles. You have the high ground, the low ground, from, you're on the side, you're switching between characters, using multiple different weapons. Even in the speed run, it is somewhat difficult to do perfectly. It's very action packed. So you feel like you're doing something. It does lead to things in that it leads to connections with Devon Weston leading into I Fought the Law and all that jazz. Yeah, I like this mission. I think it's probably A. I don't think it's S. There are some memorable things from like the setup for Blitz Play, like the I'm in charge here, Fruity. Me! You understand? Uh, not quite. Well, can you explain that again? What I was saying! <laughs> oh, you're good. The three Listen, we need help with something else. Some of the government, some of it is pretty corrupt. Not, uh, not your bit, right? Yes, but we're corrupt in a good way. I'm still not keen to put it in, into S though. I mean, what more do you want out of a heist though? It's like an A plus. I, I don't think it's S, but it's, it's close. I fought the law. Maybe for people who really like cars, this could be interesting, but it's just a really, really long drive that was obviously meant to be like, hey, look at how 
much of a big map this is and how all these things are here. Wow, isn't that amazing? If you crash, you fail and have to do like the entire drive again, you only get to keep one of the cars. And because Franklin is the best driver, you're kind of stuck with him. And so you, you don't even really get the opportunity to drive the other two cars, really. I mean, you could pick them, but obviously they're the worst choice if you want to keep the best driver. I don't hate it casually in the speed run. I do. It's like B or C for me. It's not an offensive mission or something. Like, I don't hate it. I mean, it does have Franklin at the beginning being like, Hello. It does have that meme where... You're late, sugar tits. Yep. So what's going on? Oh. <laughs> For that, I'm putting in B. It does have some memorable stuff in it. I just don't like the idea of just driving around the entire map. Eye in the Sky? I don't want to put this in the hot garbage territory, but I don't think anyone particularly likes the very, very slow flying in the helicopter and scanning people's IDs and detecting their faces and stuff, and all that ultimately leading to a drive with Franklin. whoop de doo Like, you don't even get to keep the car. Yeah, I'm putting it in D. It makes sense sometimes to have slow parts in missions, but the payoff after that has to be huge, and the payoff just is not there. It seems pretty obvious that certain things were cut from this mission. Two things that suggest that to me is, at the beginning, there's that dude who says, Oh, oh, right, uh, the helipad is on the roof. That is clearly not a voice actor. That is some guy from the office that they had to throw in that line quickly at the very end. And there's also, on the mission Eye in the Sky, Trevor rides with a pilot in a helicopter and directs Franklin in stealing a vehicle. We eventually leave Trevor and finish the mission controlling Franklin. However, Trevor can be found after the mission flying the helicopter that was once flown by the pilot. I hope it was a soft landing! This line of dialogue actually alludes to some cut content that we can partially see in the trailer for Trevor's character on Rockstar's YouTube channel. My God. I hope it was a soft landing. Maybe there was some more that you got to do with Trevor at some point, I'm not sure, but it just seemed like a, a stupid mission. Mr. Richards, I don't find the opening scene between him and Michael to be particularly amazing. And then if you d discard that, it's a drive to a random place where it gives Rockstar's attempt at stealth, which in reality is like a very linear path where you have to just hit a couple of guys. And then you have a, a punching match with Rocco, which is ultimately just a worse fight compared to the Simeon one. This mission introduces no new ideas and all the ideas it copies from previous missions, it does worse. The flight back is not interesting because it's almost impossible to fail. You just like swing from side to side or just drive, fly very fast and you will eventually succeed. It, it doesn't test you in any capacity and it's just a scripted, boring mission. The mission is just filler, as you say. Is it bad? It's like a C mission. It's not offensive. No one thinks of the, the Mr. Visions and it's like, oh damn, I wish that mission didn't exist. It's there to introduce Rocco. Carl Libre? I think this is a pretty good mission. Martin's a pretty funny character. Hey, Michael! You get to use a, a big gun, you shoot down the plane, and you chase after it. And then, of course, at the end with, you know, the iconic scenes where... What happened? Cheap bastard. You know, I really don't know why you mess around with people like that, Mike. I mean, really, I Trevor! don't. Answer a fucking question. I asked for a fair day's pay after a fair day's work. And he... I kind of got a little angry, so I admit, I kind of got a little angry. Did you kill him? What kind of fucking animal do you take me for? No, I didn't kill him. Oh, fuck. But I did kidnap his wife. Oh, no. Oh, shit. This mission's pretty good considering that there's some cut content, the Scaramuta job, where, like, you were meant to kidnap Patricia in that, I believe. And some of the dialogue that Trevor has at the beginning when you're driving to the gun is him referencing that he wants to do that heist and rob Martin, but that never ended up happening. So that the mission is still good, despite that content being removed, is pretty miraculous. I'll probably put this in S for the memes and the gameplay being, like, shocking, surprising, varied. What more do you want in a GTA mission other than more freedom to do other things, which this mission does not let you do, but still interesting. Deep inside, does anyone think of this mission fondly? It's, a, it's again another attempt at stealth in GTA 5, where it's just bad. Sure, you can change your outfit and get into the car, but then you get a car and you drive to the end and nothing really interesting happens. If you get pursued, you drop some spikes and they die pretty much instantly, and again, nothing really interesting happens. You get a cool vehicle that you get to use for like 10 seconds. It's not a bad mission, I don't think. It's probably like C. It's just, it's just a mission in the game. 
Minor Turbulence. The beginning of this mission is so not memorable that I can't even bring to mind exactly how it starts. Or more like it blends in with other cutscenes that happen to happen in Trevor's trailer. The mission itself, it is kind of frustrating. You're going too high. Go lower. You want me to put my nose into the dirt? Beep, 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 beep. But I mean, visually, in terms of Trevor crashing the plane in the back of a plane, it is something that everyone remembers. It's a pretty you know, memorable mission. I have a lot of frustrations with it, of course, because of uh, no damage. The cargo jet. No! You do get to fly the really huge plane, which you don't get another opportunity to do so. But that you can't possibly succeed is kind of frustrating. I do wish there was the option that if you flew very well or something, you could actually land the plane at the airfield. But I think it's still a pretty good mission. It's very varied in terms of its gameplay compared to other missions. Like it doesn't like steal ideas from other missions. It's A or B. It's definitely not S. I'm going to put an A just because of the meme about deleting the song. The Polito score setup is complete trash. You drive very, very far and then drive very, very far to get back. And that's it. I don't even want to argue that it has to exist. Surely there's another way they could have got that information. You get to shoot an alarm. Oh, you know. Is Predator a good mission? It's one of the few missions where you get to use Chop. It's completely irrelevant if you happen to know where the guys are anyway, which I guess you wouldn't know casually. The mission doesn't really mean much. I, I just I don't see this as a bad mission or a good mission, really. It's like C, B minus ish. I just get put it in C. Military hardware? Because you get the helicopter beforehand, doing military hardware isn't that bad. Of all the setups, it's like the least offensive to me. I think it's fine. D. The Polito score? This is like an S mission. Sure, it's A, B, C, D, E without much variation. Like you don't have options as to how you want to handle things. But everyone remembers when they come out with those huge miniguns and just blow everyone away. You're fighting through the chicken factory. You're jumping on the plane, uh, the train. It's got a lot of memorable stuff in it. It's, it's definitely an S. They handle that heist very well. And you actually get some money out of it. Derailed? Oh, I hate derailed so much. As a mission, casually, probably pretty cool. Like it's probably one of the ones that you remember the most. Uh, the cutscene at the beginning. From what I can tell, you're like a high school athlete, living off old glories. You used to be able to manage heat, and now you're worried if your loafers are getting scuffed. Any more bullshit comes out of your mouth, you're gonna learn all about my past glories firsthand, you understand? <laughs> Absolutely, sir. I mean, it does reference, you know, CJ. All we had to do was follow the damn train, CJ. Landing on the back of the train is, of course, a very memorable thing that happens in GTA 5. You get to then drive the train, which you don't at any other point in the game. You get to ride a boat, which, again, not very common. The shootout is pretty interesting. The cutscenes, the two trains hitting each other, pretty interesting. The cutscene in the end pushes forth the story in terms of, you know, enabling them to go back to the city and stuff. Yeah, I, I like it. I don't think it's an S. I don't think it's an S. I'm putting it in A. Sure, I hate it somewhat because of no damage. It's, uh, and bad this as well. It is truly a pain in the ass mission, but it is a good mission. I don't think monkey business is a very good mission. I'm not sure if this is a controversial statement. Sure, it does have you, like, cutting a grate and, and sneaking in and stuff, but the stealth doesn't really matter. Like, he says you got to use a taser, but you can just shoot everyone, and your ability to fail is, like, zero. Like, you can't even get caught in your stealth. You just end up having to shoot everyone with a taser or just kill everyone. Like, it's, it's just moving from room to room to room to room with effectively no resistance or ability to fail. Like, maybe when you play casually, like, it might seem a little bit exciting. Exciting, but like as far as stealth missions go it is the most boring I've ever seen in any game We don't even get to see Trevor ripping off Martin's ear or whatever You better treat her right man. I will amigo the Otherwise The other ear of course The way I see things you and me and Michael we're friends now good friends such good friends that we will make a great effort to avoid one another. That's fucking perfect. Sure, Steve does shoot himself and stuff, but nah, I mean, it's got stuff in it. I think the gameplay was so weak for something that could have been really cool and interesting because they're, they're stealing a, a nerve toxin or whatever, right? How, how can they make that boring? But it just is. I went in D just because it was a cool concept that was executed on terribly. 
Hang 10, super boring mission gameplay wise, but the whole rant by Trevor is of course pretty funny. <laughs> Debra grabbing a gun, Floyd a knife, but like we don't get to see the fight. It felt like they just needed a conclusion to that part of Trevor's story and to move him on. And they had no gameplay way of doing that. So they just went, I oh, just, just throw a cutscene in there, whatever. I'm gonna put it in D cause memorable, but again, it's one of those things that potentially good idea that could have been executed on better. Surveying the score, again, while I understand slow missions need to exist, this one is just like 19 different slow things. No. This mission is one of those things where what the characters are doing to get the information makes no sense. Fly a drone. Get security recordings or something. This is the sort of stuff that Lester can handle himself and they, they don't need to physically fly a helicopter. Potentially being seen from all angles while following around vans. It, it doesn't make any sense. It's boring and doesn't make any sense. It's a painfully slow mission with no variation or anything interesting. And yet considering how close you fly that helicopter, that hole, someone would take notice of that. Hey guys, uh, you know that hole we're building like that's like next to the bank or whatever? There was no people there for like five minutes recording with a camera. Should we be worried about that? Dumb. I mean, Bury the Hatchet is a great mission, I think. The, the raw emotion between Trevor and Michael when they're talking and Trevor realizes that Michael betrayed him. This is not a game to me, all right? This is a fucking way of life. I got a fucking family. Yeah, well, I got nothing. No one gives a fuck about me. You treacherous piece of shit. You're fucking dead. You're fucking dead! Michael freaking out on call to Dave. Does he know? Does he know at all? Hey, he's on his way up to Ludendorff to confirm his suspicions. That you then go to a whole new area, well, at least new in terms of like, you don't normally get to go there other than prologue. We get the sort of flashback voiceovers with Michael, which tells us some more context about the earlier stuff that happened. I made a deal. It was the only thing I could do. Either everyone dies or one guy gets out. I'm that guy. His name is Dave Norton. Nice guy, realist. He gets the glory, I get out. The interaction between Trevor and, and Michael at the at the grave, of course, very memorable. Like everyone remembers that. It's, it's a great scene. As if I didn't know. Brad, this thing, it didn't work out the way it was supposed to. I think the only thing that didn't go as planned was me showing up on your doorstep 10 years later, Mikey. I didn't want it to come to this. Yes, you did! You just don't have the fucking balls to do it! But I do! I got more to lose than you! Never a truer word has been spoken, brother! Now pull the fucking trigger! The shootout, also fairly cool, breaking your way out of there. Yeah, I think it's just an S mission. Like, I, I, I know what more I would want to happen. Pac-Man? I know they had to have some way to finish up the whole thing with Devon Weston, but I don't find this interesting. Ultimately, it's you drive really far, then drive really far again, and then you're in a car where you just spam control as you drive forward until you get to the end again. It's way too long of a drive. I mean, I think they made it that long so they could have, you know, exposition. Like you can you can listen to the history of Franklin and Lamar when they were in high school. Dave was hot. Me and Frank was always tight. Lanky and Fatty, we were slanging together, then we was banging together, then we back to slanging. That's a young man game, you heard me? Yeah, I heard you, but I don't really care. Never enough for him, man. Didn't want to be a soldier, wanted to be the general. Didn't want to be a slanger, wanted to be the CEO. Running franchises and shit. Who franchising in the drug game? There's some history with Trevor and Michael there as well, I think. I was running this small air freight outfit in North Yankton. We were kids. Kids with planes. So, this guy I know says there's this other guy needs some hot cargo moved across the border. Money's good, and I don't know enough to check references, so I'm in. A few days later, I'm waiting on the runway. I see this dust coming up off the road. Only, it ain't one dust trail, it's two. I got told one guy in cargo. First car comes through the gate, stops, someone comes out. It's my age, just 20, kind of fat but strong underneath. Love at first sight. Yeah, something like that. Other car comes through the gate. Old guy falls out, starts yelling, waving his arms and pointing at the kid. The dude that got Jack? Who fucking knows? Fat guy's running, old guy's shouting. I don't really care, I play peacemaker. Concerned citizen. I get close to the old guy and I pull out this flare gun I'm carrying around, squeeze the thing off in his eye. Shit. It was horrible. We had to pick up the body and dump it in a lake on the way. Thing was still burning in his head when we dropped him. Plane never smelt the same. Both of us threw up when we landed. It was quite a baptism. 
You ain't never clapped nobody before? Not really. Ha! So that was like it? You and Michael rolled it on through? Mas o menos. Michael didn't have the nerve back then. I didn't have the direction. Kinda worked. Until Michael got his nerve. Until he got it, and he lost it. But that's another story. And then they don't end up getting any money for it anyway, so there's no payoff. It's just, it's just bad. It's something that could have been more interesting, but just was not. So I'm gonna go, no, D. Fresh meat. So obviously the opening cutscene of Fresh Meat, where Trevor trips over. What up, What's up, homie, huh? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and there was that rumor for a long time that the conversation between Trevor and Franklin there was ad-libbed, like they just made that up on the spot. Apparently that's not true. Especially given that, I think their conversation goes on a little bit too long. I actually find it kind of boring to some degree. I don't think the mission does anything different. It's ultimately just different things from other missions redone again. The thing of having to bring up your phone to look where to go is not interesting. Who enjoys doing that? The shootout in long corridors with no variation is not interesting. Shooting with Michael upside down, while that may look different, ultimately you're just shooting people. Like it doesn't change anything about the gameplay. It doesn't make the shooting any more difficult because the things aren't upside down for you. If you actually had to shoot things upside down and the screen was upside down, I might give it some more points, but it, it doesn't do that. It's just lazy. I don't think the mission is bad. I'm going to put it in C. It's just a fine mission that no one would really complain about. Battle of Rocco is one of the shortest missions in the entire game. The only thing I like about it is in Pacifist, how I put the picture of naked Trevor and Patricia on the TV. Certainly most people who play it casually would not just immediately shoot and kill Rocco and his friend as they're driving off in the car. There'd be some sort of car chase. You're chasing two guys down in a car and then shooting them. It's not something that's going to be memorable for most people. It's almost as if like the whole thing with Rocco could have just not existed. I suppose it's not that bad, but I mean, I just felt like you could have done more with Rocco Rocco as a character and his end. It felt like they just ran out of time and they're like, oh shit, we gotta get Rocco dead. Uh, we'll just shoot him, whatever. Eh, let's put it in C. I don't hate the mission. Cleaning out the bureau, I hate this mission with a passion. The idea of just driving, waiting for an eternity for the janitor to come out with his car and then get to his house and, and, and like going through the red lights, it sucks in the speed run because the red, red lights are RNG. Uh, but in casual gameplay, it's boring as hell. Nothing happens. Clearly they just needed some way for Michael to get the stuff from the janitor and they just, I don't know, man, just like get him to offer him some money or something and leave. It's, it's garbage. Reuniting the family, gameplay wise, it's not like insane. It's got a lot of memorable stuff in it. Like you hitting the yoga dude with the laptop, putting a dick on Laszlo's chest. Michael being like, how about you suck my cock? Ha! The cutscenes are very memorable. Bring his family back into the fold. I can't imagine a better way that they could have done it. Let's be real, there's no good gameplay in this mission. But even then, I'm still gonna give it an S. It's one of the most memorable missions. I think it did what it wanted to do well, and that's fine. Architect plans is just boring. It's one of these things where Rockstar clearly wants to be able to do stealth missions and they just are still not good at them. I want to put this in hot garbage. How can you design a mission where you have to steal secret plans from an architect and make it so boring? Like you've got a good premise there and what you end up doing is walking really slow, grabbing a briefcase and if you succeed in that stealth, you just leave. The Firefighter Bureau Raid? I think this is a good mission, right? Sure, you're a janitor and that's slow and stuff, but like, it's, it's different. Like, you're literally cleaning floors with a goddamn mop. And then you blow up the place, it's a cool explosion, you rush in there as a fi firefighters. It has the concept of stealth, even though there isn't really any stealth actually at play. It's an S? I don't know about S. It's interesting, and you do varied things compared to the other missions, but I wouldn't say it's like amazing gameplay-wise. Mopping the floor is different. Yes, it's not fun. <laughs> I, I'm gonna put an A. I think it's a fine heist. And Bureau Raid roof entry? Like you're parachuting down and you're breaking in with opening the glass. The hack is boring, sure. The shootout is intense, difficult, especially when you're doing it casually. Shooting down the helicopter there, getting away with the ambulance and stuff. It's probably one of the more difficult shootouts casually. It's so scripted and so linear though, but I think it's an A as well. The ending cutscenes for both missions with Franklin just being left alone with Lester and Michael just abandoning them, whatever, is kind of funny to me. I think it's good. It's just, it's not elevated by like some meme-worthy shit like many of these other missions in S. Legal Trouble? It's like a cinematic movie in the way that it wants you to drive so you can have these cool slowdown moments where like the cars fly into the engines and ex explode and all that jazz or fly into the tank and explode. Yeah, okay, for one playthrough, maybe that's fine. 
bit. You don't really do much in this mission, but it is of course quite memorable because of the lines at the very beginning. Michael, they're fucking us. The suits. And they don't even wear suits. Wolves in turds clothing. And so then Molly runs off with the, the film and of course, very memorable scene, her getting sucked into the jet engine and you get the option of taking the plane and flying away. And then of course we learn via the phone call that I just watched Devin Weston's legal counsel get juiced in a jet engine. Oh, that Molly woman? Oh, Lord, that's horrible. You have no idea. She panicked, went crazy, and ran into it. But I saved the print, so we still got our movie. You believe that analog thing? It's all digital. We have backups everywhere. I mean, we're shooting on green screen. Well, you could have told me. I'm sorry. Look, I thought you knew. And so Molly died for literally nothing. Like, that's funny. It's one of the more funny situations in the entire game. I'm not sure how many people remember that, but that's that's true. I, I want to put an S. Like, it is. it contains one of the iconic moments. Molly being crushed by the jet engine. Yeah, I'm going to put an S. Yeah, it's good. The wrap up. I think this is a good mission. Everything coming to a close, like everyone showing up in a somewhat comical way in that it, it, it doesn't make sense that they all could have shown up without realizing each other were showing up or whatever, but just everyone around with their guns, the dude getting his head blown off, Trevor coming to save the day to save Michael, the multiple shootouts being fairly intense. I'm not gonna put this, you really wanna put it in an S? At the end of the day, it is just multiple glorified shootouts. You don't do anything new here, but it is intense. Like it, it does sell you on the stakes matter. It is a clusterfuck. Name one memory line from the cutscenes. Oh no, actually I do know because he's... What are you doing smoking, huh? Come on, come on. No, 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 that's bad for you, don't you know, huh? Yeah, well, maybe it's got a little something to do with being caught in the middle of a three-way firefight between two government agencies and a private militia. You know, it gets me a little stressed out. The last scene is more memorable for me. Yeah, okay, we'll put an S. Lamar Down. This is one of those missions where clearly they wanted it in some place far away and so you have to drive like really, really long. The drive back does enable for some banter between Lamar and Franklin, but it's not interesting banter. The final cutscene is somewhat interesting where... You know your nigga out here doing BAD, man. Why don't you slide me a few dollars or something? You know what I'm talking about? It's hard out here in a second. Oh shit, my nigga, that's nothing. Shit, yeah, nigga, I know you done went all the Illuminati and shit, you know what I'm saying? Leaving the street niggas in the back, but... Damn, man, uh, way to keep a nigga down, my nigga, I mean, give a nigga just enough money to get him a little 40 ounce in the bucket of chicken on the way to the pole house, huh? Oh, my bad, Mr. Gold Card. Excuse me, sir. Thank you for helping out a post street nigga like me, sir. You can go now, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just feel like they set this thing up where you can place the different characters in different spots and it's all completely pointless. Nothing really changes based on where you put Trevor, Franklin, or Michael. It's a long drive for a shootout that's handled poorly and then a long drive back with not very interesting dialogue and the end cutscene is okay. Like Steve being like, What's up, player? It's a C mission. It's C. I, I don't think it's good enough to be in B. It doesn't introduce any new gameplay concepts or anything like that. Meltdown? I kinda like Meltdown, to be honest. Interactions between Laszlo and Solomon are pretty funny. Mr. Richards, hi. If I could just bother you for a second. Um, I'm Laszlo from uh, Fame or Shame, um, but I do some acting on the side. I was wondering if... Uh... Oh yeah, of course. You should come see me, kid. I think I got a project that would be perfect for you. Oh, that's fantastic. It's called The Closet. Really modern stuff. <laughs> Pervert. The shootout in Michael's house, it feels weighty. It feels like it matters. In such close quarters, Michael's house that you've been in for so long, it's interesting to shoot and take down so many bad guys there in Michael's own home territory. I'm not putting an S. I'm not. But I think it, it's a good mission. True Jimmy at the end as well. Um, Teabagging. Jimmy saves Michael as well, which is, you know, a thing. It's a good mission. So the big score, Subtle, of course, bringing back the character from Prologue, as we all know. <laughs> I don't know if it's because I've done this so many times, but I think on this pretty fondly. Sure, the beginning is super slow, but it feels tense. You know, they, they pause with the, the ID and stuff. When you take the vans for the first time or whatever is, is pretty interesting. Like, like, everything is interesting. As a final heist, I do think it sells you on the idea that this is a big event that could go wrong at any moment. The shootouts is a huge clusterfuck. I can totally imagine casually how difficult that would be. And then driving out with the cars and police from every angle, things exploding left, right, and center, getting yourself in the back of the trucks. The drive at the end is kind of bad. The confrontation between the characters at the end, where they all start yelling at each other and stuff. So we can take it easy, knowing that uh, it's gonna be a few days before Judas here shows his true colors. 
Really? Now? Yeah, now, sugar. Why don't you take a moment while you're sitting on that big fat pile of cash to chill the fuck out and realize what's done is done. Whatever you say. Well, this is a good time. Let's hit this fucking fuck, 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 fuck you, you man. Hey, 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 hey. God. For a couple of Midwest stick-up artists, you guys sure have become a pair of whiny West Coast douchebags. What the fuck is wrong with the West Coast? Oh, nothing. I love it here. Everyone's so numbed by the sun that if you use a three-syllable word, they think you're a professor. Man, fuck you. Yeah, fuck you, you high and mighty weasel. And you don't talk down them to these fucking idiots. Hey, leave Lester alone. Oh, oh, you and Lester together? Oh, now that makes fucking sense. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. You all an asshole. It felt forced to me and not particularly funny. I know there was some hostilities underneath bubbling up, but like, I still think it's good. Do I want to put it in S though? No, I'm putting an A. Ultimately, I'm putting an A because the obvious big score is just better. I don't think the obvious big score has any interesting cutscenes, lines or anything like that, but the, the shootout is far more varied. You do a lot more, you cover more ground. Is it an S? Like you do a lot more stuff. I mean, Lester with the noob tube shooting down the helicopters and stuff. It's interesting. I, I Yeah, I'm gonna go with it and put an S. It is a big, impactful, cool heist. It doesn't have any memes or really memorable dialogue in it, but it's big bombastic. It's a good way to send off, send off the game in my view. Okay, as for the three endings, so Something Sensible and The Time Has Come are both boring. The gameplay sucks. So you can only really assess them based on like, what, the cutscenes, and they aren't very good either. Assessing them story-wise, like, I don't know how killing Trevor really solves all that much. Because the third way shows that there's still a lot of antagonists out there with loose ends that are not necessarily going to be handled in a completely cut-off kind of way. Trevor is crazy, sure, but was he really a threat to Michael or Franklin in the end? Especially considering in ending C, we do see that Trevor could eventually come to forgive Michael. He is crazy, yes. You could always justify killing him off because he's a loose cannon, but I just don't think it's a good ending to the story. People who picked ending A had a worse ending to me. I'm gonna put it in C. Especially considering Trevor having an ability that makes him invulnerable to damage and him just sitting there and being like, take the shots. Like, sure, he was sad, but like, just make yourself invulnerable and go home. Michael, kind of the same. Like, it's pretty obvious that he didn't want to kill Franklin, but when it eventually came to a point where Franklin was clearly trying to kill him, at that point, Michael should have just pulled out his gun and shot Franklin twice in the head and Franklin dies. He's meant to be a, a brilliant shot, right? And Franklin killing Michael, like, obviously he was forced into it by the, by Devon, but obviously feels like a very weak ending. And and Michael being so involved in making Franklin who he was and, and getting him, you know, tens of millions of dollars. Obviously, Michael and Franklin had already handled big players and, and taken them down and taken out hundreds of people. Obviously, Franklin could have just come to Michael and, and they could have handled it themselves, right? I think killing Michael is even worse than killing Trevor. If he was even less justified. Like, it felt like Franklin was taking the easy way out that wasn't thought through very much on his end. The point of it was to make it come full circle and have Franklin become Michael. But it just felt so lackluster. If you pick this ending, you didn't really get the true ending experience of, of GTA 5. The third way, I'm putting an S. It's got a lot of memorable scenes in it. Some motherfucker wants me to kill Michael. Some other motherfucker wants me to kill Trevor. I feel I can't kill both of them. All right, all right. I say kill Michael, then kill Trevor. Oh. Man, are you for real? The shootouts feel weighty and impactful and are difficult. You kind of use like all the different skills you develop throughout the game. Taking out Devon is satisfying. Hey, my bad, homie. I pick C. Ain't that a bitch. It's just a very well done mission and wraps everything up in a nice bow. You can pick out a little bit story wise and say, is this really wrapping things up perfectly? But it pretty much does. So, S mission. I don't think it's the best mission in the entire game, but it is a really good one. So this is my final list as done in 2023. What we can do now is look at the list that I made back in 2020. I may even release it on my VOD channel at some point. Apparently I did this over the course of three days. This took me only an hour and a half, but the first time round, I was very detailed. <laughs> My list is clearly very different. Blitzplay made it into S, as did the two big scores, as did the third way. I don't think my list is that different. I think what I ultimately happened is there's probably like a variance of like one letter between different things. I doubt there's any that is a, there's a huge discrepancy between. Like sure, I put the time has come in hot garbage here, and down here I put it in D. That's not a huge difference, right? I put minor turbulence in D, and in here, where did I put it? In A. It's probably because this is the point where I was full into doing no damage. So like every day, it 
it was busting my balls and ruining my runs. Oh, prologue I put in B? I wonder why. Legal trouble went from C to S? Why would I put legal trouble in S? I think I probably didn't remember about that Solomon thing back in 2020 where the film that Molly had wasn't real and it was all digital. I probably just didn't remember that. I mean, if you want to know my justifications for my previous tier list, be sure to subscribe to my VOD channel and I'll have that released there at some point. And you can compare my opinions in 2023 to my opinions in 2020. So if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for getting this far. Feel free to try the tier list yourself. A lot of people have, like this end up being a pretty popular tier list for people. There's probably like 50 entries or something. Thank you for watching, thank you for hanging out. I wish you all the best.